Mrs. Sharon Solberg was the dean at my high school, and I remember two things about her. The first thing was that she hated to wear shoes, and so she would flip-flop around campus. Um, she would take off her shoes when she was in her office, and unlike Taft, we had these long porticos that were covered, uh, but it was outdoors, so on a day like today, it was wet, and often there'd be all these worms, and she would just be kind of flip-flopping about. And I remember that, I think, because I sort of admired her total disregard for formality, especially as she policed the dress code, so while I found that kind of irritating, I don't know, I remember that about her. But I also was just totally struck by how cold her feet must have been, like no matter the weather in Baltimore, she was flip-flopping around. And then, you know, she'd come up on stage in assembly barefoot, and so I just have this vision of her like huge naked feet in all these different contexts, which sort of as a grotesque um, first snapshot, that's my snapshot of this dean. The other thing I remember about her is that she would give these really direct announcements in assembly. She would say things like, if you're sitting there slouched, you're essentially giving the middle finger to the speaker, like sit up. And just when she would say that, people would sit up in their seat and you'd be like, oh, she's talking right to me. Or she would say before a dance, she would be like, if you're dancing with someone and you turn your back to them, I can really only think of one thing you're saying to them. And you're saying it in front of all your peers and a lot of your teachers. Like, why don't you think about that? And everyone would kind of like squirm uncomfortably. Um, so needless to say, I've been thinking about her more so of late than I had in a long time, in part because my vision of her job is very different from our vision of our job. In other words, the Dean of Students model at my high school in Baltimore is definitely different from the Dean of Students model that we are working from here. And we wanted to talk to you a little bit about that. When I think of the Dean that I had in high school, um, I actually don't think of him as the Dean of Students at all. He was a guy named Jake Congleton who was a legend at the school I went to. Um, I remember more as Mostly as a great guy, he coached football and taught history. Um, but I don't, I don't remember the part about him being a dean all that much. Um, and I just said to Ms. Sanborn beforehand, I know if, if a dean's doing their job really well, is it kind of like a referee in a match? You don't notice them as much in that role? Um, and, and I don't know. Um, but that, that, I just thought about that um, in reflecting back on the dean that I had. Um, we do think of ourselves as a whole lot more than simply the people who oversee the rules of the school. That's part of our job. It's, it's easy to see us doing that. It's more than simply running assembly um, on Wednesday and Saturday. We do that too. And it's more than the comings and goings on a weekend that a lot of you are going through, some of you for the first time, um, overseeing permissions. Those are sort of easy, visible pieces of what we do. Um, but we like to think of our office as much more than simply just overseeing the rules, but, and much more as an office for student life um, in lots of different ways. So what we want to do today is take a little bit of time and talk about just some uh, four different areas of, of student life that we play a role in um, to educate on a couple topics and just talk a little bit about what we do. Um, so that's our hope today. So the first one is um, student leadership, and part of our aim is to both recognize and support student leaders. So just as a start, I want to recognize some of the leadership work that so many of you have already done. And honestly, one of the first things that comes to mind is the purposeful planning by so many of you to make dress to impress a positive experience, and that should be recognized. It also happened in lots of ways. Okay, that's good. You can clap. Come on, thank you. <laughs> It also happened through so many old boys and old girls who helped their new student transition into Taft and continue to help, either by helping on an English paper or setting up their dorm room or giving counsel on advisors. And that kind of leadership is also important. It happens um, in club leaders who are already recruiting students and raising awareness. It's happening through team captains. It's happening through monitors. And what we want you to know is that if there's something you need, in your role as leader, come talk to us about that and we will help you know, see what we can do and what kind of support we can provide. Specifically, our office is working in collaboration with class deans, with Ms. Lee and with Ms. Torino, um, with class committees and hoping to move class committee beyond event planning um, into sort of other leadership areas. And that's definitely a role that students have asked for and one that they're ready and excited about, ready for and excited about. Uh, we work closely with the athletic department, the residential life program, uh, the chat program, uh, student activities, uh, class deans, um, a whole host of faculty um, at the school. Uh, maybe my favorite part of my job, my sort of all-encompassing job at Taft, is being an advisor. 
The advisor program is a really important um, part of Taft. In the video yesterday in assembly, there was a little bit, uh, a clip at the end about finding a good advisor. Um, I think the advisor advisee relationship at Taft can be one of the most powerful ways to connect with someone and one of the best places um, for learning to happen. I happen to have the best advisee group in the whole school. No offense to anybody else. Carlson advisees, yeah. Uh, <laughs> And, and that's, for the part of me, it feels like I'm not doing my job when I'm hanging out with my advisees. Um, you're going to hear over the next sort of week or so um, about the process of picking an advisor. Mr. Campbell will make an announcement to talk about the mechanics of that. But I hope that you'll start to give a little bit of thought to what a good advisor would mean to you. Because there is no one model that's going to work for everybody. Um, you need to find you know, a, a model that's going to work best for you. But I do think there are a few principles that are in place for any good advisor advisee relationship. Number one, I think it's an adult that you're going to have a comfort level with and an adult that you will be comfortable seeing regularly. Um, and that isn't defined in any specific time period. I like to see my advisees on a weekly basis if I can. Um, it, but, and that's the model that works for me. Uh, for those of you who are new, um, if you give thought to, you know, perhaps you have, uh, you, you get bad news from home that your grandmother has become ill, or you're having roommate problems, or you break your arm and you can't play sports, or you get laryngitis and can't sing in a performance, you know, something that might be disappointing, who's the first faculty member you would think of to turn to that you might want to have a conversation with? You know, that's a pretty good starting point to think about who you might want to have as your advisor. Um, you know, you get one advisor in title, that person will have a formal, formal relationship with you. They have to write a letter, you know, various marking periods to report to your parents. But I think of it as, as very different than that. Um, it's not a formalized role. It's really a chance to have a relationship with someone who you feel comfortable with and can give you some guidance. Um, so I, I hope you'll give some thought to who might be a good person for you. That you know, Every student in the school, whether you're new and have been assigned a temporary advisee or whether you're returning, has the choice to pick um, an advisor each year. And you'll have to pick an advisor each year. And I think some of the people that I, I guess I worry about the most in a given year are the last 10 people on our list of who signed up for an advisor each year. Because that, that tells us that you don't have a connection and you're someone that, that we will have some concern about. Um, so give some thought to that so you're not on the list. Another thing we wanted to mention, and you just received an email from Mrs. Torino about this, is the club system, which is undoubtedly one of the great things about Taft. You've already heard announcements about what kinds of clubs are offered, everything from Saturday Night Out to Eating Club to Operation Smile. Um, Mrs. Torino is your point person for this. Our office is involved just because our goal is to better coordinate interests and passion. So if you come to us um, with a question, we most likely will direct you to Mrs. Trino, but we might be able to help connect you with other resources that sort of serve your interests. So the club fair will happen on October 4th. So for those of you who are interested in joining a club but not necessarily leading one, you have until October 4th to kind of keep your ears opened and then on, on October 4th there'll be a big festival and you can go and see what's available. For those of you that are interested in starting a club or forming a club, you'll need to pick up a registration packet and Mrs. Torino will have those outside of the cafeteria both today and tomorrow during lunch. Um, and that packet includes information about what you need to do which basically involves finding a faculty advisor and writing a mission statement. The, the last area we'll talk about um, is that we want to hear from all of you your ideas of how to build on Taft strengths and make it an even better place. And th there are informal ways to do that. You should always feel welcome stopping into our offices and, and throwing out any ideas that you might have. Um, it's also something that we try to do formally as a school. Uh, you know, last year um, we had John Amici came in um, and, and did a couple days of programming that were fantastic. We got a lot of data from that. Uh, we had all of you fill out a youth risk behavior survey at the end of the year, which just gives us a lot of data about things that are working well and aren't working well. Um, the next thing we have coming up this year along those lines uh, will happen in October. Um, all ninth graders and 12th graders and faculty will be asked to fill out a survey for something called the Independent School Gender Project. Uh, Taft has participated in this um, since 2005. It happens every three years. And it's a, um, a survey that will give us a, a whole host of data on issues of, of cli school climate and equity at Taft. 
Um, so if you, in an English class in October, are told, you know, well, we're going to do this, this random survey, um, it's really an attempt by us to gather information that's going to help us as a school and, and point out the things that, that, we can, that we do well. And I will say from the last two times we did the survey, where we are off the charts compared to other independent schools in the United States and in Canada, which is the group of schools that are part of this, the relationship between faculty and students is, from all of you, comes across as being stronger and more positive than almost any other school. And that's something that, that, that makes Taft what it is and is something that we're really proud of um, and hope that that continues. Um, so, don't hesitate to come into our offices anytime. Sadly, some of you will get notices from us saying you have to come talk to us about things, but please, Come on in if, you know, for any reason you have questions, if we can't answer it, we'll get you sent to the right place. Um, there's lots of candy available in our offices as well. Almost anywhere you come into our cluster, you can get a little snack. So even if you're just looking for a snack, come on in. Um, and let's have an awesome year. We're off to a great start, and thanks for all your help. <laughs> Seniors, we need you guys to stay to talk about inner dorming so we can get that going. Upper mids, lead the way out. <laughs>